Keith Erickson and you're watching Community Connection. Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Bill O'Donnell, the Register of Deeds for Norfolk County. Bill, thanks so much for joining us. Keith, thanks very much for having me and thanks to Braintree Cable for, for putting this on. Appreciate that. Um, talk to us a little bit about the Registry of Deeds. I've never been there. I know where it is because I just got summoned for court, a jury duty and it's right down there in Dedham. But talk to us a little bit about the Registry of Deeds and how it affects people's lives. Well, you're right. Physically, it's located in Dedham. <laughs> uh, it's been located there since uh, 1793 in Dedham and in the building we're in since 1903. Wow. And uh, really, the, the Registry of Deeds is probably an arm of government many people don't know about. But when you think about it, it deals with the biggest asset most of us have are our homes. So uh, since 1793, the mission's probably been the same, is to make sure, you know, uh, land records uh, are recorded safely, accurately, uh, and that they're access accessible to the public and that they can be relied on. Mm -hmm. I think the mission is probably the same. We, we're delivering it in different cir uh, circumstances, but community land records could, could be the deed to your house. It could be uh, when you borrow money, it's the mortgage and the bank wants to make sure they get paid. Or it could be uh, some of your uh, government agencies. Uh, the Conservation Commission might order a uh, order of conditions, so or the Board of Appeals has a, uh, a decision they make and they want it recorded. So there's all kinds of records uh, that get recorded at the registry, and, and that's principally what the, what the function is about. Um, is it still confusing to people to talk, like if I say the Registry of Deeds, a lot of people just don't know what it is. Uh, uh, no, and, and, and sometimes we get confused with the Registry of Motor Vehicles, and, and, uh, but uh, no, the, the Registry of Deeds has, has been an arm of government here in Norfolk County. Norfolk County was established in 1793. Uh, mm -hmm. Governor John Hancock, one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence, uh, signed a law creating Norfolk County. Braintree's been part of Norfolk County. Mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, so, uh, and a lot of times, you know, people might go to a closing at the lawyer's office. Uh, we've expanded areas at the registry that people can now, you know, come in, in to the registry and do the closings um, and, you know, mm -hmm. down physically at the mm -hmm. building. But a lot of times, um, you know, uh, people just, you know, go to a closing, mm -hmm. sign a bunch of documents and, and don't know where the documents go afterwards. But there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of things that affect your home that you can, you know, take advantage of, and, and it's great having a program like this. You know, for instance, people can put a homestead on their uh, mm -hmm. property to protect mm -hmm. their property. Uh, we see more and more people uh, checking to make sure their mortgages have been paid off. They know they've been paid off, but that a discharge, which tells the world that that mortgage has been paid off, has been recorded at the registry. So mm -hmm. um, th th there's a lot of uh, community outreach like that uh, that we've been doing uh, to, to let consumers know they can, th they can take steps to protect their property and protect their interests mm -hmm. in their property. That's a very important point, and I just want to make an, a very, another important point. You are the 11th register of the Registry of Deeds. There's only yeah. been 11 of you guys since 1793? Since, since 1793. So I, I just want to get people to, I mean, we're going First off the... First one from Norwood, though. <laughs> I just want to give people a little bit of history um, because I found it quite interesting. Um, back in 1793, the gentleman who first started, Elephant... Elephant Pond. Captain Elephant, Elephant Pond. Pond. He fought in the Revolutionary War and uh, he, he, he was elected in 1793. And uh, I, I tell the story for, you know, I have three children. I, I, I still live in Norwood where I grew up. Uh, but, you, you know, as a parent, you're always kind of taking care of your kids, I guess, some, in some ways, but here he is, the first elected register uh, of deeds in Norfolk County, and for three years he kept the books at his dad's house <laughs> while the courthouse was being built, because the first registry was in the first courthouse uh, back in 17, well, they've moved in in 1796. That's amazing. All right, one more quick fun question. Have you ever seen a ghost in the old building? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but uh, plenty of history in Norfolk County. Yes. Uh, there, there, there were four presidents born in Norfolk County, mm -hmm. as we hear in Braintree. Mm -hmm. you know, John Adams, John Quincy Adams, uh, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, and uh, uh, George Bush Sr. And that's another project that, that we've done. Um, you know, there's a lot of history in Norfolk County, and, and my theory is, I, I'm kind of big into history, mm -hmm. uh, really the records are there for the real estate community to rely on. It's a pretty big part of the economy here locally, uh, here regionally, and, and in the United States. If you can't rely on records, the, uh, the real estate economy would fall apart. There wouldn't be houses being sold or commercial development taking place. 
But we've seen more and more people uh, coming to the registry for historical and genealogical research. And one of the projects, we were the first registry uh, in New England to do, um, we've transcribed a lot of the documents. So from 1793 to 1900, they hand wrote all the documents out. Sure. So when, and, and that's one of the modernization in, initiatives that we've done. If you go on our website, www.norfolkdeeds.org, you can look up all these records. And if you enter book one, page one, you can see the first document from 1793 online. Wow. But if you hit another button, the transcribed version of that penmanship uh, t takes place. Now we did it to help the lawyers and the title examiners and the engineers that are you know, using the documents for real estate purposes, mm -hmm. but we're getting uh, great feedback from uh, people that are using it for historical and genealogical research because they can now read the documents. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, because it was kind of hot, it was first hard to read the documents. And when you think about it, you know, some of the newer generations, uh, my son graduated uh, three years ago from high school, some of them I, I don't know penmanship, you know, and, and so anyway, we're trying to make the documents relevant. Uh, and, 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 you know, again, we were the first registry in New England to transcribe the handwritten documents. It was over 450,000 uh, documents that were transcribed. And you guys deal with like 200,000 pieces of documentation a year, correct? Yes, it, it could vary for anywhere from 160,000 to the, you know, early, and that's in, just my, early in my county. tenure, it was, it was, you know, 350,000 was the, was the record. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of documents that come in. Um, we've tried to streamline the operation. I mean, by way of my background, I, I mean, I'm a believer in public service. I, I, uh, I, when I came back, I, I went to Georgetown University and, and worked for Congressman Moakley. I saw what, you know, he believed in customer service, uh, helping the constituents. Um, I worked in the district attorney's office, so I, I'm a believer in public service and probably like many of you has got involved locally, got elected on the planning board in Norwood and in town meeting. But I also was in the private sector uh, as, as an attorney, so you know, you try to take some of the private sector thinking yep. to, to this organization. And that's what, that's what we've tried to do is, is you know, modernize it with you know, making the documents uh, available online. And now we have electronic recording. So even though we're it's a paper-driven business, and when I, when I got there, I, I thought it was being paralyzed by paper. Mm -hmm. um, we have now electronic recording where uh, an attorney here in Braintree can do a closing, uh, look up the information online, and then transmit that package, all the documents online uh, to get recorded. Mm -hmm. So the lawyers like it, the institutions that deal with the registry like it, and we've, we've been doing, uh, doing that, and it's been expanded. The gov Governor Baker just signed into law, and, uh, and thanks to you know, the, lo the local legislators that you have uh, here in getting that bill through, mm -hmm. it's allowed us, we were the first registry to do electronic recording in the land court section of the registry, mm -hmm. and we, we did that this past spring. Okay. Um, you uh, sat down and you, you, you um, kind of came up with some ideas that you really wanted to talk about. One of them is about uh, deed scams. Sure. Um, it's out there. And, you know, people take advantage of uh, people. Uh, and it's great that, you know, a local cable like yourself, uh, you know, tells people about deed scams uh, because it's happening. We had uh, Hank Philippi Ryan was uh, a, a month ago in the registry doing a story on deed scams and it's still happening. Um, there's a couple of variations. One, people get solicited for, for $60, they uh, get solicited that this group will get you a certified copy of a deed. Hmm. Well, come to the registry directly. Uh, at most, it would cost $2, and when we go to the town halls and the senior centers, we certify them for free. Um, don't pay $60 for something that you can go directly to the registry of deeds for. And the reason why I mentioned that it's still happening is it, it, it's been, it, it was, there was an article in the Boston Herald, WBZ Radio it, it did a story on it. Mm -hmm. It's still happening. As a matter of fact, now uh, they send out what looks like a tax bill and they call it a document processing fee and people think it's some type of bill and they're paying $83 and that group sends them a copy of the deed and then gives them information that they could go probably directly to Braintree Town Hall mm -hmm. as far as your tax rate, what the assessed value of your property is. So, you know, um, it's just, it may be legal. Uh, I know the prior attorney general and the new attorney general, uh, we've, we've written to them, we've written to the secretary of state and they've put out consumer alerts on this su subject. 
Um, and in the fine print, they say it's a solicitation. It may be legal, doesn't make it right. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you know people that are getting these type of solicitations, tell them to disregard it. They, 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 shouldn't, they, they, you know, they shouldn't be taken advantage of like mm -hmm. that. And as I said, it may be legal, but I think it's kind of unconscionable that the people are still doing it. Can you kind of maybe draw us a picture in our head about what maybe they're looking at? Like, is it just like an envelope size? Is it manila envelope? Is yeah, it something it's, that is it's, a little it's, bit it's, of... It's, 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 it's regular envelope, mm -hmm. and it, it, looks, it looks like... A, it kind of has the format of a tax bill. I see. The, the first group was kind of a, a letter, a solicitation, which would, would kind of make some representations. Uh, I, I, I kind of sarcastically said, you would think you couldn't get up in the morning unless you had a, a certified copy of your deed, but right. that's not the case. You know, when you go to sell your house, the attorneys and the real estate brokers and the professionals that are involved will look up the information, come to the registry, or go online and get things going. So it's good to have a you know certified copy of your deed, but you know, um, not not to the not at the expense of paying uh, exorbitant amount of money like that. Mm -hmm. Um, talk to us a little bit about the Homestead Act because uh, uh, the general manager here, he's like, hey, Bill wants to talk. We're talking with Bill, uh, Bill O'Donnell, the register of the Registry of Deeds here. Um, and he's like, hey, he wants to talk a little bit about the Homestead Act. And I said, great. So I went online, typed it in, Homestead Act. Well, apparently it dates back to 1860 in the Civil War, but that's not the one we're talking about. We're talking about the one here in Massachusetts. The one in Massachusetts because <laughs> it means different things in different states. Yes. And I'll tell you, in Massachusetts... Um, it, you know, it's written in by your state legislators and it allows um, people who own property as their principal residence to declare in a state a homestead. And you know, the filing fee for, uh, to, to get it recorded is relatively modest. Again, those mm -hmm. fees are set by the state legislature and the governor. Mm -hmm. It's $36 to file a homestead. And it's always being looked at. When I first started as registered, there was $300,000 worth of protection. It's been increased to $500,000 worth of protection. And you know, people say, well, well, what does it protect me against? Well, you know, look, if you don't pay your taxes to the town of Braintree, they can take your property by tax title. If you don't pay your bank, your mortgage, even if you have a homestead on, they can foreclose on you. But I give the example, most people drive and they think they might have a lot of insurance on their car, say $100,000 worth of insurance, but they hit a party mm -hmm. uh, and it's a bad injury, say it's a $400,000 case, well chances are your insurance company is just going to pay off that $100,000, but the advocate for that injured party is mm -hmm. going to be looking to your assets to satisfy that obligation. Well, as I said earlier, the biggest asset most of us have are our homes. So uh, I, w I would say, I'd say 9.9 .9 out of 10 attorneys would say it's good to have a homestead. Um, it's, it's a good consumer protection. Hopefully you never need it, but um, it's good to have. And there are other things that have been written into the statute by your state legislators. For instance, a, a, a recorded homestead protects the proceeds of your sale of your home for a limited period of time mm -hmm. so that creditors can't come in and swoop in after that money. Um, if your house burnt down, if you had a homestead recorded, when you get the check to rebuild your house, creditors can't take that money, again, for a limited period of time, in that case, two years, mm -hmm. for the proceeds of a sale, one year. So there's little protections that are built in, and uh, I, I think it's, 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 it's a good thing for people to have. Is this a one-time thing? Like you just pay the $36 and you have it for the rest of the time you live in your house? Yes, and, and, and thank your local legislators. I, I, uh, I know you, you, know, you have Senator Keenan, you had Senator Timothy, you got Representative Cusack. Um, recently, a lot of times people didn't know their homestead got terminated. So mm -hmm. theoretically, when you record your homestead and it's valid, it's, it, the, the, legislator is, the legislature has now made clear that's valid forever. But prior to, to uh, the lobbying change, when you refinance, sometimes no one reads the 30 pages of documents in that I mortgage. know, I didn't. There's yeah. a one-sentence clause that <clears throat> would terminate people's homestead. And, you know, I, I, I know, hey, I had three children, people going to college, refinancing. I said, can you take that out? They wouldn't. What I did, I put another homestead on. But they've changed the law that now says, hey, if that language is in there, like today, if you refinance today and that language is in there, it doesn't kill your homestead. So that's a good thing. But um, so theoretically, you record the homestead, it's good. But um, just make sure you weren't, you know, you, you didn't refinance prior to the effective date of that statute, which was March 16th, 2011. So, okay. you know, um, you know, just to make sure, because, you know, um, you, you hate to have you know 20 years from now someone said you know that when you refinance that homestead was terminated you know because you you know you, you don't want that to happen to you how long does that process take how long does the uh, actual process of uh, getting a homestead 
Oh, when we go to office hours, uh, you know, Mayor Sullivan's great about hosting us. Uh, we, we, we go to all the town communities, uh, but the town hall office hours, people come into, uh, say, uh, the Braytree Town Hall when we're there. All we need to do is look up their deed. We put the deed reference there, and it, it gets notarized. And when I'm there and my staff, we're all notaries. We notarize the signatures. They give us the filing fee, again, set by the state legislature. We take the document back to Denham to record. So it's a relatively simple document to fill out, but it has good protections and people should consider it. All right. For 36 bucks, I think that's a pretty good deal. Well, as I say, you know, uh, for, for most of us, the house is the biggest asset, so that's what you want to protect. We mentioned it a little earlier, but the modernization of the registry, something that you're pretty proud of. Yes, and, and you know, um, being involved in sports, there's no I in team, so we, we had great, uh, you know, a great, you know, team down there. And uh, my, my, actually, my dad was a member of Local 369 down <laughs> here in Braintree, he climbed poles for the Boston Edison. And, you know, uh, you, know you, you talk about teamwork and, and, you know, there's a union at the registry, but my dad was in a union and, and you know, you just work with people and you get things done. Sometimes people don't want change, but change was embraced at the registry. We, you know, in, at 649 High Street, people can come in. We have over 45 computers sprinkled through the building. Mm -hmm. And that's not just for the lawyers or the title examiners, it's open to the public. And, um, uh, other modernization initiatives, just having a website. When I got there, there was, there was no email or website. If you go on our website, www.norfolkdeeds.org, there's information for first-time home buyers. Um, there's information for people struggling with foreclosure. It doesn't matter which community. All the communities in Norfolk County, someone has been struggling with foreclosure, and we've partnered up with NeighborWorks of Southern Massachusetts and Quincy Community Action Program, where these are nonprofit groups that give people guidance and help. And, and, and my suggestion to people is don't wait till they're auctioning your house uh, on your doorstep. You know, go to these groups. They're nonprofit. They, they uh, emphasize financial literacy. They try to help people stay in the house. And sometimes they have that tough conversation that you might have to transition to somewhere else. But uh, so there's a lot of good information. So we've tried to modernize our approach by by using a, you know the, the website. Um, we've. Uh, run it like a business. We were the first registry to put a generator uh, at the registry. So we, we've been open uh, throughout these little problems, these snowstorms, the electricity going out. We just put the generator on. Mm -hmm. And we do run it like a business. We have business continuity planning, um, which is all the information now is online. You can index your name, Keith, back to 1793. <laughs> but we do a daily and weekly backup that gets shipped to a renovated nuclear bun bunker in Rhode Island. Uh, by law, we still have to microfilm. So uh, the microfilm gets sent to Iron Mountain in New York and Massachusetts. And some people might say, well, microfilm, what, what, what good is that for business continuity? Well, when you think about the floods down in New Orleans or just recently in Houston, mm -hmm. what would happen if there's a flood at the Registry of Deeds in Denham? You know, at least we would have the, the microfilm to, to recreate the records. And we did open up a, a, an office in downtown Dedham, down the street. So if something happens at 649 High Street, as I mentioned, it's mm -hmm. a historic building. We love build, be, being there, but it's built in 1903. Yeah. We can uh, get up and running. It would be a struggle, but you know, uh, people want to make sure when they're closing on a house, they don't. You know, it's like anything; uh, they don't want any excuses. So, <laughs> the, you know, these are some of the modernization initiatives we've tried to implement and, and kind of run it like a business. You yourself have actually, uh, you know, testified upon Beacon Hill and uh, you know, getting more transparency at the registry. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Well, first of all, I mentioned the electronic recording. The, lo the local legislators were great. We, the law got passed, which allowed us to do electronic recording on the land court side. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping we can be as successful with this new bill. It, it's, it's, uh, 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 it's filed on the House and Senate side, mm -hmm. where it says, if you're, you have a mortgage, you borrowed money, mm -hmm. it's probably the biggest financial obligation you're going to have. Mm -hmm. Well, there's no law on the recorded land side that when your mortgage gets assigned, that the assignments get recorded. And I think it should because um, sometimes we, we see people coming to the registry, they're saying, look, I need to get a mortgage discharge. And I'm looking, I don't know who I'm supposed to get it from. And you know what? 
you know, I think it's just sloppy work, and it's not the community banks. You've got a great community bank here uh, in, in, in Braintree. The community banks play by the rules. It's been some of these bigger banks, mm -hmm. uh, and, and the reason we're fi filing this is we're, and we're getting f uh, pushback from the bigger banks, and we see some of the bigger banks don't follow the rules. They, they charge fees. They, 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 they do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. uh, this outfit called MERS. It's, it's these big financial entities, and, and I think their sloppiness uh, hurts the consumer. So when consumers go to look for their discharge and they got to go get one, mm -hmm. it's not as easy as going down to your local community bank, which gives great community service. Mm -hmm. People forget some banks went out of business, uh, some banks merged. Uh, we have a document on our website, Where Has Your Bank Gone?, which has federal and state contact information so you can track it down. Well, wouldn't it have been just a simple thing? If your mortgage gets assigned, then the assignment should be brought to the registry. And we say 30 days. Hey, if the lending institutions want it longer, make it longer. But they should be recorded. And now with everything online, the consumer can just look it up mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and just see, okay, who, who, who's holding my mortgage? We see it more when people are coming back saying, hey, I'm selling my house. I paid this thing off 20 years ago. I got to get a discharge. I don't know who to get it from. I see. It would just help the consumer to have it recorded. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, you, you have office hours? Yes. Again, the beauty of the, the computers, uh, <laughs> we, when, when I first started, it was like when I worked for Congressman from Oakley. It was the old-fashioned way. You take the information down, go buy, buy the registries. We, we uh, go to all the communities. When you're talking uh, communities, you're talking the 28 communities. 28 communities. Months, yep. Yep, we, all the way we, down we, to Plainville. Uh, yeah, Plainville, <laughs> Bellingham, Brookline, down to Cohasset. Great communities in Norfolk County. The town halls have been great. Like I say, Mayor Sullivan has always opened up the town hall that we, you know, we, we go there and we try to you know, get through once a year to each of the town halls. But we've been lucky enough to be invited to some of the, the senior centers, some of the you know, Braintree Rotary, mm -hmm. some of the Rotaries, the, uh, and even the, uh, the veterans organizations. A lot of the VFWs, American Legions invite us. You know, they just need a speaker. And, but we can bring our computers with us so they can look up the information. They might need a copy of their deed. Mm -hmm. They might not be sure their mortgage. They know it's been paid off, but did the discharge get recorded? Uh, some people go, I don't know if I have a homestead, I could. So th there's a lot of um, information out there. Uh, so we, we do have office hours. And with everything online, uh, we can actually, you know, our, our philosophy was bring the registry into people's homes and businesses. And we really bring in the registry into the communities with the computers. You know, we just show up and have, act, you know, people, it accesses all the records. Uh, and, and we love you to come by the registry. We're still one of the few registries that do it the old fashioned way. We still print books. Um, and I should mention, I mentioned my dad was a union member here for the Edison. But he said, hey, some of, some of us don't know anything about computers, don't care to know anything about computers. So he's, he's going to be 87 in February. So we have a customer service center. You can call them directly at 781-461-6101. Repeat that? 781-461-6101. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the customer service center, we have staff uh, there, and they're dedicated. Whether you show up in person, we created this customer service center for people to either walk in if they need help, or if they if, if, call up on the phone to if, you know, try to help people out. And that's sort of the philosophy that we do at these office hours. Uh, we sort of take our version of the customer service department, and we take it mobile when we go to the, you know, like the Braintree Town Hall. Mm -hmm. uh, talk to us a little bit about the, transcript, the transcription program. Yes, that was the project uh, that took the uh, records from 1793 to 1900. They were all, uh, they were all back then, mm -hmm. they, they all were written out. Yeah. The register in 1900 probably came I'm so came excited. Around. So I can go down to the Registry of Deeds and look at a book, a physical book from 1793 and kind of Well, the records are from, seven, the, the books yeah. have been redone. But I the, see. But the, yeah, the actual documents. And the, I was saying the register in 1900, his modernization mm -hmm. initiative was the typewriter. So all the documents that were easy to read from 1900 on. I see. From 1793 okay. to, to 1900, when you came riding in from Braintree on, you know, on the horse, they would hand write the documents out and then hand the originals back to people. And uh, so those documents were hard to read. I did it to help the, 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 the legal community, the people that are, are, are doing real estate. That was my principal function. Mm -hmm. But as I, I mentioned earlier, when I started doing it, I noticed you know, a lot of the younger people, you know, I went to St. Catherine's School in Norwood. You knew penmanship, you know, uh, the Sisters <laughs> of St. Joseph made sure of that. 
But some people, I could see the younger people, sure. they might not be able to read this penmanship. Mm -hmm. I hope that changes, but at least we've transcribed all the documents. Mm -hmm. So. Um, the legal document is the handwritten one, but if you're watching online and you hit another button, the mm -hmm. typed version will come up. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people like it, because as I said, there's just a, 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 a lot of history uh, in those documents. What do I need as a person who wants a discharge? What do I need to bring to the Registry of Deeds to get that process going? What kind of information do you guys need from me that I would need to bring? The, the ideal thing is bring the discharge. I what see. happens is people come to the registry because they don't know where to start. They've been told to get a discharge. The discharge you really should be getting from uh, the bank that you borrowed the money from. And they're getting better. Uh, the bigger banks are getting better. In fairness to the bigger banks, they are getting better. I mean, there was a lawsuit by the attorney general to kind of against the bigger banks on a number of issues. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, I'm a big believer in the small community banks. Mm -hmm. They're really the fabric of the, the, you know, our communities. Mm -hmm. If you needed a discharge, I'm sure if you went down, they'd look it up. The, the person that's authorized to sign mm -hmm. the discharge is in the next room, you get good customer service. The problem is these bigger banks where people have to get the discharge, just trying to get somebody to give them an answer and to help them. That's where the issue is. Um, and in fairness to some of the banks, they sent discharges to the consumer mm -hmm. and they didn't make it clear to the consumer that that discharge should be taken to the registry. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for a discharge, maybe start with the attorney that did the closing. Mm -hmm. But you know, sometimes it's years later that the attorney's retired or passed mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. um, that's where you gotta really track it down to the bank. Okay, um, we got about two and a half minutes left. Where would you like to see the Registry of Deeds continue to improve on? Well, you know, I've always prided the fact, uh, try to bring a, you know, a customer service oriented operation to the registry. And we love the feedback we get. We, we feel like, you know, we do feel like we give good customer service, that we have one of the best registries uh, in the state. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you, you, you still want to get better. And uh, I think, um, I know we're ahead of the curve because a lot of the registries around Massachusetts don't go back to year one for their records. We're back to 1793 when the records started. Um, um, people can do it uh, the new modern way, looking up the information online. That's where the society's going. There are still people that like to do it the old-fashioned way. And I jokingly said, we still print books. Where There's 21 registries in Massachusetts where there's probably five of us that still print books. Um, I, I, I still print the books so people can come in and do it the old-fashioned way. So. Uh, I, I'm just looking, you know, if people want us to deliver services in a better way, mm -hmm. let us know and we'll try to make it happen. And that's how that electronic recording started. That's awesome. Bill, uh, just give out uh, the website again and phone numbers and address if you could. Sure. Uh, well, the Norfolk County Registry of Deeds is located at 649 High Street in Denham, Mass. Mm -hmm. If you want to call our customer service center, it's 781-461-6101. And uh, the website is www.norfolkdeeds.org, or you can email me directly at registerodonnell at norfolkdeeds.org. Excellent. Bill O'Donnell, right. thanks so much. Keith, thank you. Thanks for having Appreciate me. Appreciate it. You were just listening to Bill O'Donnell, the register of the Registry of Deeds down in Norfolk County. You've been watching Community Connection. Until next time, I'm Keith Erickson.